Viewers, I make no apology at the fact that it's just too cold for an in-depth discussion at this organ. So instead, you know what? I'm going to let it speak for itself. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, pull the covers over your face, and relish in seeing a man suffer for his art. And here, at the foot of this churchyard, with the heavens about to open, one of the most magnificent vistas that any village rambler can expect. The beauty of this Norman church, completely unaffected by the gloominess of the weather. I'm taking some refuge here in the rear porch of St Andrews. The main entrance is on the other side. But already, before even entering this building, there are so many allusions to the unique character that lies within. A building almost completely untouched by Victorian restorers. This is Norman architecture at its best. I would love to meditate on the scenery here from outside. Have a biscuit. But the clouds above are rather threatening. Time to get some solace inside this ancient building. the distant pop of gunfire. So characteristic of this part of Salisbury. scent and a character that could never be replicated anywhere else in the world. If you visit England for the first time, this is the place to come. The love of this community for this building's heritage really shines through here. It's so well kept. 
in a moment, I'll look for a church history here. But I love to just observe my surroundings to begin with. At university, I'd spend ages trying to find facts from books to fill my essays. And then a thought struck me that all the content I needed was what I could see with my own eyes, what I could hear with my ears. So much can be learnt purely from observation before information. The Church of St Andrews is one of three in the Woodford Valley and is situated next to the River Avon. To the north lies Salisbury Plain, long inhabited by our prehistoric ancestors, with the enigma of Stonehenge barely a mile away. To the south, down the River Avon, is Salisbury Cathedral, with the prosperous medieval close around the soaring medieval spire. Around you, as you sit, is displayed the history of our valley and monuments to the earlier inhabitants. The nave of St Andrews was started between 1076 and 1092. The chancel is about 1200 and the tower slightly later. The roof above you was originally of wagon type and is 14th or 15th century. The stained glass near the stair of the vanished roof loft is probably 15th century and has a nearly complete crucifixion and a figure of a bishop. The lectern is a good example of the 17th century revolving desk. A chained book, a 1571 edition of Bishop Jewell's Apology, which had been there for 400 years, was stolen in 1970. There's a unique feature of every church I visit that excites me more than any other. That, of course, is the pipe organ. To fill these buildings with heavenly music is the greatest thing I can do today. So I turn to an organ raised into a gallery. Such a rare feature of churches. Normally the Victorians would have taken these away, but here the gallery remains. The organ is installed within that gallery. And it's time to see how it sounds. Excuse me, viewers, I've had to go outside to get some more clothes. I was too vain to dress up warmer, but I'm absolutely freezing. Anyway, the organ loft of St Andrew's Church, Great Durnford. Very limited space up here. But an amazing view. Look at these beams from here. Wow. An organ in fantastic condition by Jackson Organ Builders, Oxford. A single stop for the pedals, a board on, and then the great organ is this lower keyboard. The swell organ is the upper keyboard. All of the pipes from the swell organ are kept inside a box. Just think of some Venetian blinds. When you push open the swell pedal, it opens those blinds. And that's the organ's way of achieving a crescendo. Sounds very primitive, but if you were to blow more air into the pipes, they'd just go sharp. You can't increase the volume with more air, so there has to be another way. And that's what the swell box is for. Anyway, Ben, switch the thing on. Oh, it is on. No, it isn't. Where's the on switch? Must be here somewhere. I have no idea. We're in business. The music of J.S. Bach is so intricate, so perfect in its construction, that it's almost as if it's a product of nature itself. So, what better way than to start a miniature recital here as the sun sets at St. Andrews?
with one of Bach's shortest chorale preludes for the season of Advent, full of anticipation, full of longing. Nun com der Heiden Highland. Bach was truly a master of his art. How many composers can you think of whose music is as well suited to a village church as it is to the grandest of cathedrals? Bach must surely be the best of them. But the instrument here at St Andrews was of course installed mainly for accompanying hymns. As we begin the season of Advent, a delicate hymn tune in its bare, singable form Es ist ein Ros entsprungen. Finally, in the quiet at this ancient church, some music which might make you cry. If it does, you wouldn't be the first. 
To me, it's the most moving piece ever composed for the organ for the season of Advent. Brahms' reworking of that hymn tune I've just played you, Es ist ein Ros entsprungen. 